Good morning. I'm Lavita Lenore, and we are the Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church located in Mobile, Alabama, where we at the well want to welcome you to the well experience. And we have an amazing pastor, Pastor Trey Warfolk, here at the well, and our well family calls him Pastor Trey. Here at the well, we love well, we live well, and we lead well. Our focus this year is the year to grow. We hope you're ready for your praise because we're ready to get our praise on. And what God has to say for us today will change our lives. Let us get rooted together and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget to share today's service. Let's go to church. you are 
worshiping with us today. And if you're worshiping with us online, we ask that you put in the chat where you're worshiping from. And because this is pastor's anniversary, go ahead on and put in the chat how much you love him. And he would love to read all of those after the service today. Today I will be reading the scriptures, Psalms 136, 1, and Psalms 104 and 5. And it reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Psalms 104 and 5, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth enduring to all generations. So come on, we're gonna stand up, ain't well. If you're not too mean, too tired, we want you to praise the Lord at the corporate for ain't well Baptist Church, hallelujah, aka the well, where Pastor Trey Woodford is our pastor. Come on, let's get on one accord this morning if you know that the Lord is good. Did he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on your way? Are you glad that, yeah. hallelujah, we serve a king of kings and the Lord of lords? Hallelujah. Come on and put those flat hands together. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, you are good and your mercy Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. 
Come on. Put your hands on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's so worthy to praise y'all. Oh! 
eternal God, we come one more Sunday to just say thank you. You didn't have to do what you don't, but you woke us up one more day. And we just come to say much obliged. Some of us have lost loved ones this past week. Some of us have sickness in our home. But you said according to your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We come praying for those who are here today. Praying for this anniversary. Praying for the speaker of the hour and his family and his church. Then we pray for Angwell as a whole. Angwell have many hurts and many broken hearts, but, but we are still here. And we just come to say thank you. I want to thank your God that my health is as well as it can be. Whatever is wrong in my life, I'm not going to tell you about it because you already know. But I just stopped by to say, Lord, we are so thankful. Bless the former pastor of this church. And my God, we pray that this day would be a bountiful day. And as we pray, oh God, we pray for Pastor Trey's family. As they make their journey back to Georgia. Wrap them in your arms of love and guide them safely back home. But, oh God, I need a special blessing this morning. I need to know, is there any word from the Lord? Speak to the man of God this morning. Let him preach, Lord, like he never preached before. I don't know about Angbell this morning, but all the week long, the devil been running me but I know I know I know that you are able this morning to bind up broken hearts to heal wounded spirits this morning and now Lord now Jesus we are praying for our pastor this morning that you will bless him in a special manner touch him Lord from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Give him his strength, Lord, where he's weak, and build him up where he's torn down. And then when we come to the end of this day, blessed is only you know how to bless it. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Do we have any guests this morning? Amen. You got any guests? Wave your hand. Wave your hand if you got any guests. We don't have no guests. Oh, come on, somebody. I, I know you're in here hiding. You feel like you think you want one of us, but it's all right. <laughs> Amen. We'd like for you to come to the well now. Amen. You, you, in a, you in a mighty good place. Amen. Thank God for all of you being here at this time. Now we're going to have our announcements at this time. Thank you, Reverend Faust. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. So happy to see everyone here. Just a few announcements. Uh, but, but before we begin, just want to acknowledge our past emeritus, Dr. Michael E. Jackson, First Lady, Mr. Barbara Jackson, First Lady Emeritus. Here over 45 years. Amen. Always a pleasure to see him in the house. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Just a few announcements. Uh, Pastor Trey has been talking to you all about the state of the church address, uh, at which time he will have that scheduled and let you all know when that time will be. A revival at the Home Street Baptist Church, that where Pastor Trey is the evangelist, March 20th through 22nd. Pastor is Keith from Leatherwood. We are asking that the entire church will come out in full numbers. Due to the academic quarter ending on March 23rd, the student academic recognitions uh, will be held on April 16th during the 9.30 a.m. service. So please submit those names to Minister Rogers or any of the youth counselors no later than April 9th, and we'll recognize everybody. 
Uh, as Pastor Trey has been announcing, Minister Lula Payne, Ms. Payne, if you would wave, wave your hand, uh, is going to be assisting him with uh, many of our sick and shut-in members. Sometimes we are not totally aware of who may be in the hospital or who may be in need. So Minister Payne is going to help bridge that gap so that we all feel connected here at Ainwell Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Okay. Of course, uh, we are here today to, uh, for the culmination of Pastor Trey's second year anniversary as our leader. And uh, I would just like to say, along with everybody else that's here, how much we appreciate you. We see the grind. We see the dedication. We see where your heart lies. And Angel, you should know that he works untiringly for all of us that are here. So let's stand. Let's, let us stand and, and give him a hand, a wave, or whatever it is that he does as the pastor of this church. Uh, so often, so so often, various times, people, people that I see have so much respect for Pastor Trey. From afar, people that he probably don't even know, but they know that many of us are members of Aimwell and just see what all he has done. And then for Pastor Jackson to, for the transition to take the place the way that he did, you really don't see a lot here in Mobile. And so we just appreciate that transition and the way that you have come in and been able to lead us because we do, what do we do? We love well, we live well, and lead well at the well. So at this time, I wanna ask the following people to come join me up here on the pulpit, please. That's Sister Javon tonight, if you would come. Come on. <laughs> Minister Lisa Rogers, is she here? I don't see Lisa. Okay, uh, I think I saw Lisa, is one of the other youth counselors here? I saw Lisa Carson. Oh, they're in Children's Church. I'm sorry, okay. By the way, let's go ahead and dismiss Children's Church. If any children who would like to participate, please go at this time to Children's Church. Uh, Miss Cynthia Towner, if you would come, please, ma'am, thank you. <laughs> Miss Marshan Porter, if you would kindly come wherever you are. Brother Harold White, if you would come stand with me. <laughs> Captain Charles Bagsby, if you would come up and stand with me, please. Thank you all. Appreciate y'all cooperating so nicely. Uh, this is Pastor Trey's uh, team. Sister Sandra Porter, come on up. Thank y'all. So I didn't tell them beforehand because they would have said no. Thank you all for coming. Uh, these are they, some of, some of those who are work closely with uh, Pastor Trey in trying to carry out uh, some of the, his, uh, carry out his vision here at Aimwell. Uh, so at this time, the, this, this team wanted to do a special dedication and give a special gift to Pastor Trey. So Sister Sandra is going to bring that out now. That's the cue. Yeah, please. <laughs> Does she have the key? Did she go out that door? Sandra went out the wrong door. We just got a small commercial break right here. <laughs> I could have sworn I said back there. I may have given her the wrong information. She all charged it to me. But uh, while we were waiting, many of, of the updates and things that you see around here at church has been the vision of our pastor. And uh, so, again, so appreciative that he's been able to t pick up the torch from Pastor Jackson. And ladies and gentlemen, we have not missed a beat. Uh, we were shut down shut down and could not have church. That deserves, that deserves a hand. We did not come inside this building. We did not come inside this building for uh, two years, I think it is. And uh, 
we were able to continue to have service. Uh, at first, it was just online, and eventually, Pastor Trey saw fit that we could have church uh, drive-in uh, on the first Sundays of every month. And uh, we, again, thank, yes. And we, again, did not miss a beat, ladies and gentlemen. So I really want Sandra to be up here. My apologies. I think I told you the wrong room, sister. <laughs> Pastor Trey, will you join us, please? This is from your administrative team. And those that work closely with you, we just want to say from us to you, thank you. Thank you for letting us work. Sometimes it hurts. <laughs> but we appreciate everything that you do. And it's such a lovely color. <laughs> I ain't gonna say what I want to say. But uh, yeah, yeah. Now look at this here. Yeah, thank y'all. Thank y'all. How old is Terrence? Since you got so much to say today. Um, let me say this, and while they're standing up here, uh, I know it's my day. Uh, but the way that we're able to get things done, uh, be it during the week as well as ministries, and this, this thing takes organization and structure, infrastructure, this is how we're able to do it. Would you help me thank God for our administrative team? For real, for real, seriously. Amen. If it was not for these people, all of them, Terrence is, of course, chief of staff. Harold is over our facilities. Charles is over our security. Javonda does some of everything, but she's ministry director. Of course, our financial coordinator. <laughs> ah, yeah. Our youth minister, Lisa Rogers. Sandra, of course, is my special assistant. Marshan is over our uh, sanitation department. And so we'll, I'll give God praise because, of course, when you all come, I want you all to understand to have people at the doors and all of the kind of stuff and for our sanctuary to be clean, for this building, the lights to be on, the air to be on, all the stuff that we take for granted uh, that are on every single week is because of these people. Come on, can you help me thank God for my staff, my team? Come on, amen. Now y'all dismissed with y'all stubborn self. I'll be shaming y'all self. Oh, y'all so, they, they hate being in front of people. Yeah, I'm with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what? Terrence don't sit Sandra to children's church. She went all the way, all the way down there. Well, good morning, Aimwell. I tell you, that was a little weak. Let's try, try one more time. Good morning, Aimwell. It's so good to see you all today. Uh, I'm not going to cry during this part, so y'all can keep your little comments to yourself. Um, I'm grateful today to have my mother here today. Uh, would you stand, Mama? Come on, let's give God praise for my mom. And also my brother, my only brother, is here today. Amen. They drove all the way from Georgia yesterday. Come on, Aimwell, y'all thank God for them. And uh, grateful to have them with us today, and they'll be traveling back. Uh, traveling back to Georgia today, and so we're grateful. <laughs> we're grateful uh, for them being here. Listen, how many of you came to have some church today? <laughs> listen, I, I want us to, listen, I know it's a celebration, but we came to hear from God. Is that right? Amen. 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 And so, uh, Reverend Faust is coming to introduce our preacher today, and I can't wait to hear old Uncle Lou give us a word. Come on, let's give God praise for Reverend Brian Faust. So glad to be able to introduce our speaker. Been knowing him a long time. Amen. Uh, we were 
partners together in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. It is where I retired at. Amen. Amen. That's where I retired. And so glad to have my friend. I got to go down and surprise him one Sunday. If the Lord say so. Pastor Luke holds a Bachelor of Art degree in religion. And he has a minor English and from Mohouse uh, College in Atlanta, Georgia. As well as a Master of Divinity degree from Phillips School of Theology, International Theology Center in Georgia. He also is an ordained uh, elder of a full connection of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, where he's serving in ministry since 1990, and, and, and he is one of God's best preachers. Having served in the state of Georgia and Florida, and in Missouri, he is now honored to serve as the pastor of the Stewart Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church right here in our very own city in Mobile, Alabama. Pastor Luke has played leadership roles in the Christian education, evangelism, evangelism and ministry development across the CME. He's on the board of ministers examination in our church on the Southeast Alabama Conference Further, he is the chair of the Mobile Movement of the Faith Action uh, Center of Alabama in Mobile, Alabama, called Mobile Hood. To further pursue his achievements and enlightenment, Pastor Luke is a proud member of Kappa Alpha Amen Fraternity, incorporated in the Master Masons. I will present the psalm and introduce to others none other than the pastor of the Stewart Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Let us receive him by raising our right hand. Everybody call his name, Pastor Lou. Pastor, Pastor Lou. Lou. Preach, 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 preach. After the choir has sang the hymn, he will be coming out to us in his own way. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I'm so glad that he knows my name. God has not forgotten. He knows me. No matter how long it takes, you may think he's forgotten. But come on, pat yourself and say, he knows my name. God has not forgotten. Amen. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. And oh, how he he. How oh, he talks with me. Oh, how he tells me. I am his own. You know my name. You.
Yes, you know my name. And oh, how you walk with me. How he walks with me. And oh, how you talk with me. Just to sit and commune with you. And oh. when you know our name, you know our situations. When you know our name, you know our circumstances. But when you know our name, it reminds us that we're in relationship with you. And you won't put any more on us than we can bear. Thank you, God. 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 So since you know our names, you know our situations, you know our circumstances, you know what we need to hear today. So move, Master. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. Let me say something that'll let somebody else run on just a little while longer. Let me say something that'll let them know that the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to the one who endures to the end. Let me, let me say something, Lord, that allow them to know just to hold on a little while longer because you have not forgotten about them. Touch these, your people. touch the angel of this house who you have sent here for now two years turn that two into twenty that twenty into a legacy and that legacy into a memory that lets them know today Trayon Antonio Woolford came this way we thank you for the Moses and Zipporah of his house. Reverend Dr. Michael and Dr. Barbara Jackson for paving the way for this Joshua to take the well, to love well, live well, and lead well not only on Earl Street, not only on Michael Jackson Boulevard, but through the bottoms, the campgrounds, wherever you would be. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Sounds so, so good to say amen just one more time. Amen. Those who know God is good, say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Sounds so good to say amen just one more time. Amen. And if you know God is making a way in your life, and you're ready to praise him anyhow. I dare you just to open your mouth where you are and tell the Lord, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. For all you've done for me. Since there's some Georgia folk in the house, since there's some Georgia folk in the house, since there's some Georgia folk in the house, 
might as well just do something that Georgia folk will understand. Shine on, on me. Shine on me. Let, let the light from the lighthouse shine on me shine oh on me
So today is a special treat for me because the man who first embraced me in this city and his lovely helpmate who have taken me under their wing and into their home, into their hearts are now here as we celebrate the one God placed on his heart to take aim well just a little further into the promised land. This is a full circle experience today, you all. Because in 2015, when I was laying up in University Hospital, a man who I'd never met before knocked on the hospital door and took a seat in the chair next to the window and sat down just a little while to make sure that this little citified country boy from Atlanta, Georgia, who had come all the way up here from Miami, Florida, would know that he's not in this thing by himself. And then when I found out that his lovely help me wore the colors of my mother, that beautiful red and white, my mama made sure I told her sorrow, take care of my baby. And for the last nine going on 10 years, that's what they've been doing. Come on, can we give God praise? For Reverend Dr. Michael and Dr. Barbara Jackson. Hallelujah. I had to do that because I couldn't go here without thanking God for that. And it is funny that we were on a trip for somewhere and, and Pop le leaned over to me and said, listen here, um, I think I'm, think I'm gonna sit down in a little while. I said, what you talking about? Well, I've been at that church 40 some odd years. I said to myself, dog, you've been there as long as I've been alive. But I saw it in his face and I felt it in his heart. And he said, I got somebody. I got somebody. And what he did not know is this. The somebody he got had connections to me back home in Georgia. So my best friend in the world, my brother for life, called me and said, hey, man, I need you to look out for somebody. I say, all right. Uh, Trey Woolfolk is coming to church called Aimwell. I said, what? And when I put it all together and then found out that Trayon Antonio Woolfolk wore some beautiful colors as well, or that crimson and cream, it made my heart feel good that there was another achiever in town. 
And for these last two years, he's not done anything less than allowing the Christ in him to shine brighter than the diamond around his neck because he knows that even though we claim to be the best because they had to name us twice, this young man has taken the mantle and gone higher. And today, we honor you, Trey. Today, we thank God for you, Trey. And today, we say we love you, Trey. I love you so much that I told those folk down the street, y'all hold it down. I got somewhere to be this morning. And we're going to be here all day because we have all love for you. Come on, let's give God praise for our pastor. Hallelujah, God. Mama, bro, man, thank God for y'all. Uh, you, you, you looking at Atlanta? You looking at Buena Vista? You, you, you looking at some Georgia folk who, 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 who sometimes feel lonely in this road tied war eagle country. But we serve a God that still loves us all. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise for the Warford family. Hallelujah. Staff, staff that is second to none here at Aimwell, we thank God for you. Music ministry, we thank God for you. Ministerial team, we thank God for you. Uncle Brian, we thank God for you, man. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Faust. Hallelujah. Dr. Mixon, we know we thank God for you, man. We praise God. But before I go to work, I got to say one thing because I didn't come by myself. There's at least one amen in the building. There, there's one at least thank you, Jesus, in the building. There's at least one thank you, Lord in the building and it's coming from the pulpit because I thank God for the one he sent me to help me stand when I don't feel like standing can you help me honor God for the blessing of my life the love of my life the first and only lady of my life the first lady of the Stuart Memorial CB Church Lady Bridget Greer Lou come on let's give God praise I love you so much I thank God for you. All right, let's go to work. Walk with me to Joshua. Joshua chapter number five. Joshua five. Joshua five. And I want to look at verses two through nine. Verses two through nine of the fifth chapter of the Old Testament record known as the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter number five. Verses 2 through 9. Once you've found it, please respond by saying amen. amen. If you need a little bit more time, just say, here I come, here I come, here I come. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We bring you greetings from the Stuart Memorial CME Church of Mobile, Alabama. Uh, God's place for you and me on the avenue and beyond where we're doing ministry that matters today. We thank God for the people of the Stuart Memorial. We thank God for uh, those who are sharing online with us today. And we pray God gives you a word that gives you strength for this week's journey. At home, we would say something like this. I want to know the word so I can live the word. For to know the word is to live the word. So, Lord, show me me in this word. 
reads from the New International Version of God's Word, Joshua chapter two, ver, chapter, chapter five, verses two through nine. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites at Gilbreth Halah. Now, this is why he did so. All those who came out of Egypt, all of the men of military age, died in the wilderness on the way after leaving Egypt. All the people that came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness during the journey from Egypt had not. The Israelites had moved about in the wilderness 40 years until all the men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died. Since they had not obeyed the Lord, for the Lord had sworn to them that they would not see the land he had solemnly promised their ancestors to give us a land flowing with milk and honey. So he raised up their sons in their place. And these were the ones Joshua circumcised. They had not been circumcised on the way. And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in camp until they were all healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, today, somebody shout today, I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you so that this place has been called Gilgal to this day. Look at nine one more time. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today, I have rolled away the reproach from you so that this place has been called Gilgal to this day. I want to wrestle from the thought, a necessary procedure. A necessary procedure. Turn, turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes... We have to have a necessary procedure. Find one more neighbor and say, neighbor, I just told that neighbor, sometimes we have to have a necessary procedure. Now tell the most important person in the room, just look at your hand mirror and look at yourself real quick and just say, self, sometimes we have to have Put it on the big screen. We have to have a necessary procedure. On Friday, March the 17th, if the Lord says the same, I will celebrate another year of life. On Friday, if the Lord says the same, I will put on my green, hoping to receive some green. Uh, to celebrate another year that the Lord has blessed me with. I'm looking forward to a wonderful day afternoon, evening, night. Uh, I'm looking forward to a little bit of cake, some good eating, maybe go to a movie, uh, drink a little Kool-Aid, if you will, in moderation, 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 to celebrate another year of life. But that celebration 
comes because at 24 hours old, the doctors told mom and daddy, there's something wrong with your baby boy. I had been born with a condition that I still wrestle with today. That if they had not performed surgery at that time, my body would have overheated and I would have died. So every few years I had to go into the hospital. Every few years I had to go into some kind of treatment. Every few years I've had to deal with this and deal with that to the point in, 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 in October of 2015, my situation had gotten so bad that I thought I went in for one thing, but then the doctors started rolling me to the to to not through the emergency room and to the operating table and the doctor said these words Mr. Lou if we don't do this procedure you will die if 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 if, if we don't put you on the operating table right now you will die if, 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 if we don't give you this, 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 this anesthesia and, 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 and go in and take care of what we need to take care of, your life will no longer exist. We have to perform a necessary procedure. And I need somebody in here to know and tell the truth about it there have been some times in our lives that even though we're prepared to celebrate a new season of our journey, God has had to pause us because we're carrying some stuff that's about to kill us. We're carrying some stuff that's weighing us down. We're carrying some stuff that is causing us pain. We're carrying some stuff that's causing us unnecessary trials and tribulations. That's why I've come by to tell somebody at Aimwell this morning, God needs to perform a necessary procedure. Why, 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 why is the procedure necessary, Marvin? Because we are entering into a land and a season that we've never experienced before. And even though we've got the power to succeed, we're carrying some stuff that will remind us of our past. Look, look, look at the text carefully. Look at the text carefully. The, 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 you, you do understand that in chapter 1, the Lord tells him, be strong and very courageous. In chapter 2, Rahab gives them the word that the word is out on y'all Israelites. Y'all are kicking tail and taking names. In chapter 3, they cross over the River Jordan. In chapter 4, they take the stones out of the middle of the river to show that the it to show the Israelites the same God that stopped the Red Sea in Egypt is the same God that's stopping the Red Sea in Jordan, which simply means the same God that was with Moses is the same God that's with Joshua. Uh oh, let me remix that real quick. The same God that was with Michael Eugene Jackson is the same God that's with Trey Woolfolk. It's the same God doing the same thing for the same people who ought to give him a unique praise. I, 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 I need somebody in here to understand somebody, sometimes God has to do a remake. Sometimes God has to do a remix. God has to do a redo so that he can remind us that he's still the same God that was with grandmama, the same God that was with mama, the, the same God that's with you right now. 
So watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. They're, they're getting ready to do the redo. But, but, but here, here, here's the thing. That they're, they're going to face these teens that are already terrified. So the surgery is not for the enemy. The procedure is for us. Let, 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 let me say that one more time. If, if you look at verse number one of chapter number five, it talks about how the kings had already heard about the triumphs that the Israelites were having and they were terrified, they were fearful, they were trying to come together to figure out how we're going to stop these folk. The, the, God had already placed fear in the hearts of our enemies so the surgery is not to repair anything that the enemies have done. The surgery could be for the things we've done to ourselves. And some of us, if we told the truth about it, we have been in need of procedures that we've been holding off on because we've not been able to admit what we've done to ourselves. Look, look at the text carefully. Look at the text carefully. Look at the text carefully. The thing, the thing you got to understand is the God we serve is going to use precision tools to make a clean break. If you look at the text, chapter, verse 2 talks about make flint stones, make flint knives, make flint knives. Remember, these folk were used to dealing with gold. These folk were used to losing, dealing with silver. These folk were used to dealing with precious metals, but, but petrologists and mineralogists will have us to understand that when you use flint and sharpen it in such a manner that when you use flint, flint cuts as sharp as a surgical knife. So the cut will be clean so the healing can be quicker. The cut may be clean so that the healing may be quicker because if they would have used bronze, bronze would have done the job, but bronze comes with germs and bacteria. So that even though you have been cut, the cut is so nasty that it's like you've been sick all the while. That's why it is necessary for us to go to the proper surgeon instead of Dr. Miami who's still using balloon and, 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 and lighter fluid to help folk out. We can't go to Dr. Facebook. We can't go to Nurse Instagram. We can't go to therapist Snapchat. We, 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 we can't go to, ther to, 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 to nurse practitioner Twitter. We can't go under the shade tree Sometimes we need to come to the doctor's office and fall down on our knees and say, Lord, make me over again. Because if I get my healing from Facebook, everybody going to know my business. If, if, if I depend on, 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 on Nene and Riri and them, who on their fifth this and their sixth that and still ain't got it right, I'm going to carry the pain that they have. But if I just turn it over to Jesus, he's able to clean up what I messed up so I can start my life all over again. my enemies but then watch this the, the necessary procedure also is to help me understand not to find myself in this predicament again uh, 
thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dad, if you, 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 you know this. You've, you've taught me this through our conversations. The, 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 the text says the reason why they got to go into surgery is because they can fold. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The, the, it's in their genealogical nature to be disobedient. The text says that the men of military age that were with Moses were not able to get to the land of promise because they disobeyed the Lord. They had been circumcised. Which meant they had made the commitment to God. I'm going to serve the Lord all the days of my life. But y'all know the story. As soon as Moses went up to Mount Sinai, they went buck wild. They started making golden images of Moo Moo the cow and, 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 and Nene the goat. They started making golden images and Aaron did not have enough backbone to say, y'all need to stop that. So while Moses was gone with the Lord, the folk who claimed to be following the Lord kept on doing their own thing because they needed something to entertain themselves. So this is the first case or one of the earlier cases of spiritual attention deficit disorder. B -b -b because since they couldn't see Moses, they felt like they couldn't see God. And so you know how it is when the cat's away, the mouse will play. And some of us know some folk in our bloodline, physically and spiritually, who are shouting on Sunday, but raising hell as soon as they got in the car. We know some folk who told us, don't do as I do, do as I say, because how they were doing did not match up to what they were saying. So God has to remind Joshua that I got to cut you again so that you don't make the mistakes that they did. Th th there are some bad examples that we have in our mind. There are some folk who let the Lord down who we were counting on. There were some folk who have told us that we weren't going to be able to do this because it's these same folk who told Joshua and Caleb, yeah, I know y'all saw the grapes and I know y'all saw the honey and I know y'all saw the milk, but we saw giants in the land, so we can't do nothing. These are the same folk who told Joshua to sit down somewhere because we're not able to take the land. And can I let you some let you in on a little secret trade? Sometimes you gotta cut the naysayer and get you some yaysayer. If the Lord said so, yes we can. If God be for us, yes we can. If God has done it before, he'll do it again. So yes, we can. Oh. I, I, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to have this procedure that others did not use their benefits to have. Because the covenant was just like having good health insurance. You're looking at somebody who was so glad when Obamacare came out. Because in all honesty, no insurance company would cover me because of my condition. Yeah. 
Obamacare gave me coverage because to the other insurance companies, I was uncoverable. My pre-existing condition would not allow me to be covered because they were not qualified with enough compassion to handle what I've been through. But then when Obamacare came, mama, the, 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 they, they said my pre-existing condition was already included, so I got a plan for you. There are some people in this building who had a pre-existing condition that other folk cut you off. But the Lord said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I got you covered. Necessary procedure. Necessary procedure. Just, just one more thing I gotta tell you. So, so now that aim well, I mean, I'm sorry, the Israelites. I'm, I'm sorry, Terry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm my bad. Charles, Charles, my bad. I'm sorry. My bad. I meant to say the Israelites. I meant to say the Israelites. I really did. Now that the Israelites have been circumcised again, 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 again. Again, again, the Lord turns to Joshua and says, Joshua, tell the folk on the phone that your, your reproach has now been removed. See, see, Joshua takes care of the house first. Then the Lord turns around and says, Joshua, that just wasn't for them. That was for you. See, for them, the reproach that was removed was the stigmas that they faced in bondage in Egyptian slavery. But for Joshua... It's for those times where they doubted your abilities, questioned your vision, and demeaned your qualifications. For, 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 for the Israelites, it, it, it was for those memories of picking cotton and Conecuh County. Riding the back of the bus in Montgomery. Not being able to go to regular schools in Topeka, Kansas. But for Joshua, it, it was for when the folk in Macon didn't understand your gift. The folk in New Orleans weren't sure if if you, had, if you could master divinity. And if, 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 if even some folk on Earl Street didn't think you had a Eugene anointing, not realizing God had given you a unique anointing. <laughs> uh, 
that, 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 that reproach comes from the stones that were in the Jordan River. Those stones that were first used as a circle of remembrance. But now being used as tools for reconstruction. And today, Gilgal still stands there as a reminder of what God has done. I need somebody in here to understand <clears throat> You ought to have a Gilgal in your life because you're about to go to Jericho. You, you ought to have a Gilgal in your life because you're about to go to Jericho. You, you, you ought to have a Gilgal in your life because you're about to leave Williamson and LaFleur and go up to the hill or to the gump and become a bulldog or a hornet. You ought to have a Gilgal in your life. Because you're about to leave Bishop State and make your way to USA. You ought to have a Gilgal in your life because you're about to leave the Orange Grove and meet Jed and Ellie Mae and Jethro out there in Beverly Hills. You ought to have a Gilgal in your life because you're about to leave James, JJ, Florida, and Wallona over there in Cabrini Green in Chicago. And you're about to catch up with George and Weezy and have you a maid by the name of Florence because you're going to move on up a little higher because you're finally <laughs> about to have the peace of the pie. <laughs> Do I have a witness here <laughs> who can turn <laughs> to your neighbor <laughs> and tell a <them>, neighbor, <laughs> my Gilgal <laughs> reminds me <laughs> the God <laughs> that blessed me on Monday. <laughs> is the God that's walking with me. The God that kept me yesterday is the same God that's gonna hold me tomorrow. The God that's been holding my hand while I run this race is the same God that's keeping me right now. The same God that met Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah in the fiery furnace is the same God that's holding me right now. The same God that was with Daniel in the lion's den is the same God that's holding me right now. The same God that called the rage and sea. The same God that told Lazarus to get up. The same God that walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. And the joy, 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 joy. That we share as we tarry there, none of them has ever known. But I gotta tell them about one more. 
necessary procedure. Y'all do know what that win was. There was a doctor who needed a doctor to save a sensing world. So this doctor called his own procedure. They carried him to the preparation room in the upper room for one last supper. Because you do know when you go into surgery, you cannot eat after a certain time. So he had one last supper. Then the ambulance came and took him to the hospital. One doctor said, ain't nothing we can do. Another doctor said, he doesn't have enough insurance, but he still went through the procedure. On Friday, they laid him on the operating table, called an old rugged cross, put surgeons in his hands, cut him in his side. They didn't have any blood for him because his blood never loses power. They said he wasn't gonna make it. So they put him in the GCU, not the ICU. God's care unit. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday, but early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power, all power in his hand. That's why I need to tell you, son, be not dismayed. Whatever the time, God will, God will, God will, God will, God will, God will, take care of you. Can I ask y'all a question? Can I ask y'all a question? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? Won't he do it? Won't he hold your hand? Won't he do it? Say I, I, Tell him it's necessary. Tell him it's necessary. Tell him it's necessary. All that I've been through, it was necessary. But this too, this too, this too, show you, show you, show you.
necessary. 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 Stand right here, man. Stand right here. Hand stretch, please. Head up, head up, head up. Head up. now. Heal now. Heal now. I'm not just talking about from the migraines and all the other physical challenges that you've had. But heal now from the doubt of others, from the delay that was not denial. It was just getting ready for your destiny. Heal now. Heal now because Jericho is coming. And they're going to need you to give the marching orders to walk around those walls and watch them come down. But they can't take the orders if you've not healed. I'm going to say this, and I wasn't paid to say this, but I'm going to say it, and I, I don't believe going to be held in contempt but if I am I got a lawyer who's never lost a case <laughs> Trey you are the pastor of Aimwell Aimwell loves Moses but Aimwell is saying Joshua just like we were with Moses, we're going to be with you. And trust your uncle when I say this. We've got a calling from God that is undeniable. But the work is so much worth, so much better. When the people say, just like we were with, with so-and-so, we're going to be with you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, Head up, head up, head up. Father, in the name of Jesus, send the soothing oils of grace, the anointment of mercy. Send those stitches of favor that allow folk to see that this is the one you have sent to this place and allow him to look in the mirror with confidence now to know all that he's been through just prepared him for such a time as this. Lord, remind Trey every day that he is enough. <laughs> remind Trey every day he is enough. 
and the unique anointing that you've placed upon his life and the gifts that you have endowed him with. are just a testimony of your hand upon him. And surround him with protection from your heavenly angels so that everywhere his foot may trod, he shall be prosperous. Let him know everything was necessary for a time such as this. And then, Lord, be with Aimwell. Let them know that there's no need to turn back now. We've come too far. Let them know nobody told them that the road would be easy. But you haven't brought them this far to leave them now. Let them love well. Let them live well. And let them lead well. In the name of Jesus. We believe it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. In Jesus' name, amen, and praise God. I need everybody in this house to stretch your hands out wide. Stretch your hands out wide. I need you to do a self-check. Do a self-check. Look at all the stuff that God had, had to cut off. Look at all the people God had to cut off. Look at, look at, look at, look at the scars that used to be there. They still there, but they not as ugly as they used to be. Because when God cut, he cut you clean. And he just has to leave a little sign as to remind you of your Gilgal. Of what you've been through to get you to where you are right now. So I speak those same words that I spoke to him to you. Heal now. Stop letting folk take you back down memory lane. You done moved to Destiny Boulevard. You, you don't live on memory lane anymore. Stop, stop, stop allowing yourself to doubt yourself. Because what God has for you, it's for you. And can I let you in on a little secret? Folks scared of you now. All this mumbling, they scared of you now. They don't know the stuff you've had to deal with to get yourself right. But when you get yourself together and start walking around with your head up high, with your chest out, because your eyes have stayed on the hill, because you know where your help comes from, they won't stand a chance. So in the name of Jesus, all that you've gone through was just a necessary procedure.
God bless you, brothers and sisters. My name is Pastor Trey Wolfong. I'm the senior pastor at the Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church, a place where we love well, live well, and lead well because we are the well. Listen, I hope you were blessed today. And if you were blessed today by the worship and the word, do me a favor. Do me a real quick favor. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Hit that heart button just to let us know that you were blessed today by the worship and the word that went forth today. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you were blessed today, let us know that. Let us know that because we were blessed. You can even type in with you on our YouTube page or our Facebook page. You can say, I was blessed by the worship and the word. Today. Listen, we got to get ready to go. But as we're getting ready to leave, I want you to know that you're worshiping with us on our Aimwell Anywhere platform. That is, you can worship with Aimwell from anywhere, anywhere in the world. And because you can worship with Aimwell from anywhere, I want you to understand that you can receive Jesus Christ from anywhere. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you think may have disqualified you. God is still able to save you, turn your life around, place your feet on solid ground. I want you to know that. You can give your life to Christ today. There's a QR code on the bottom of your screen. If you follow the prompts of that, put your phone on that. If you watch it on television or, or you can also use another device, put the camera on it. It doesn't take you to our website and you can connect with us. And now we have staff members waiting to connect with you, to share Christ with you today. Listen, you can, be a, you can literally join uh, our church, not only uh, in person, but you can join on our Aimwell Anywhere platform. This is another campus that we have, our Aimwell Anywhere campus. We would love to have you to be a part of our church. Not only if you want to give your life to Christ, you can join our church. Join the Aimwell family. We would love to have you. And if you want to join the church, you want to join this, this worship family, this family of, of believers, we would love to have you. I would love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church. If that's you, use that QR code at the bottom of your screen, and you can follow that, and it will take you to the necessary place that you need to take uh, to, to join our church, to be a part of this family. Listen, thank you, family, so much again for worship with us today, and I pray that if you don't know Christ, you leave here knowing him. If you don't have a church home, you leave here with a new family. Because listen, we are grateful that you chose to worship with us today. So listen, we're grateful to, for you, our your time today, and we want to pray before we go, because I always send us off with a prayer, because I understand that sometimes, sometimes, friend, family, that we, go, we carry so much and then we make it to Sunday, we say, I'm going to tune in to church today. And sometimes we need some prayer to help us get through to the next Sunday. So I'm going to pray for us as we get ready to leave. I love you, family. Thank you again for your time and worshiping with us. God, I love and I praise and honor you for your people and how they came to be a part of this worship experience. Thank you for the word and the worship that went forth today that was a blessing to them. God, we give your name praise, glory, and honor for what you're doing and what you continue to do in and through our lives. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Cover us. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you, family, for being a part of this experience today. Again, my name is Pastor Trey Woolfolk. I'm the senior pastor of the Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church, a place where we love well, live well, and lead well because we are the well. I'll see you when I see you. Peace. Thank you. Uh, I'm preaching for the hour. To, that was prophetic today. Would you help me thank God for Reverend Marvin Luke? Come on. Did he bless us today? My goodness. My goodness. We've been blessed um, the last two Sundays, haven't we? Um, and um, thank God for Reverend Kimbrough and Reverend Lou for taking time. And Reverend Luke called me and said, nephew, I'm staying the whole day uh, with you today. I'm not going to my church. And I just want to thank God for the relationship uh, that, 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 that extends here. And he's had my back. Would you help me thank God one more time for him? Amen. And I certainly would be remiss if I did not thank God for my pastor, Emeritus, because um, we met uh, four years ago around this time. Um, and, of course, I can't thank God for him if I don't thank God for uh, James Jackson, who made the introduction uh, uh, some years ago. And I've been friends with James for about 12 years now. Never knew he was from Mobile. Never knew he had a father who was in the ministry. Uh, and then uh, to meet him and, and to meet his mother, uh, Sister Barbara Jackson, and for what you all have meant to me and mean to me. I want to thank you. Uh, I came here hurt. I came here struggling. And I have healed this far. Because, y'all, 
So thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you um, for that. And um, thank you. Thank you for that. So um, so um, I thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Um, I'm trying to hold it together. I promise I am. But you know, in moments like this, you only, I have no choice but to be reflective uh, because I know where I was in 2019. And while I was preaching to you all, I was hurting, I was struggling, and I was doubting myself about whether this was what God wanted me to do, whether I was good enough anyway. Uh, and God has done so much in four years uh, and God has blessed us, saw us all the way through a pandemic. All the way through. We had, we had nothing as of three years ago. We're, we're now, with our, with our social media following, we have about 1,500 people that are connected to our church, and most of which don't live in Mobile. And I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful for my mother and my brother for being here today. Thank y'all so much. Um, my mom tunes in every Sunday. She goes to two church services every Sunday. Uh, she goes to her church in person, and she shouts. <laughs> and then she goes home, and she attends. And she don't just speed up to the preaching. She watches the whole service and uh, listens to our services. So that's our e-member over there. Uh, my mama, amen. And uh, I'm grateful also for my brother. He doesn't watch every Sunday, uh, but my mama gives him the breakdown on Monday morning, amen. And uh, he is, he is a, a wonderful big brother. He is, uh, uh, they can verify that I am really shy, for real, for real. I'm really quiet, uh, just not around y'all. Y'all won't let me be. And, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for my brother because he is a wonderful husband, wonderful father uh, to my three nieces and the example of man <laughs> that he is. And uh, he's also Dr. Wolfo, uh, amen, got his doctor degree, amen. And so, um, and so I grateful God praise me. And my father is watching actually uh, from Latonia. He texts me during service uh, just to say he, uh, he enjoyed service as well. I'm grateful for my godmom as well, amen. <laughs> Uh, many of you know she came to visit this time last year, and now she a whole member. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise for her. Now listen, y'all got to tell me something. What's up with all this red today? Did, what's going on? This for me? Y'all even got the Omega to wear a red tie. Look, it ain't that something. Yeah. Yeah, he ain't have a choice. Yeah, thank you, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and certainly, as I always, thank God for the staff. And I gotta thank God for you, Aimwell, um, for being the church that you are. Uh, and I, I know I'm gonna cry during this part, but last year, um, this time, I didn't realize I was sick. Uh, had lost some weight, and man, a few weeks later, I was in ICU on Easter Sunday morning. And it was scary, it was rough, it was a lot of stuff. And then I came to you and I asked you, I said, y'all give me about four weeks to get right uh, and I'll be okay. Four weeks turned into three months and two weeks. And I was so afraid that the God, that, that I just didn't know how things were gonna work out. That if I needed more time and you all supported me during the worst time of my life. You all stuck with me during the worst time of my life. You all text, checked, all that stuff. And every time I, was, I would come to church and I was struggling to come to church at times, you all said, Pastor, take your time. And I wanna thank you for loving me through that. Even when I came back, I was not 100%. Uh, and you all love me through that. And I can tell you I'm so much better today than I was in August. And it's because of your support. 
And I appreciate y'all so much. And uh, it, is, it is my aim and my, my joy. I told y'all, I'll tell you all the time, the joy of my life is to call myself your pastor. And uh, it's an honor to serve you. And uh, I look forward to seeing what God has in store for our church. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, now, that's all I got. I made it through without crying, for the most part, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did all right, yeah. Yeah. I, I told you, I'm a, I'm a gospel thug. I ain't crying today. Yeah, 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 yeah. But let me ask y'all a question, though. Uh, with this lineup we had this month for the anniversary, can we bring them back next year? Yeah, how about that? So, mark it down. Um, I'm telling you, now, if you don't do it, they, they already know. I already asked you now. So, Sister Lou, make sure he get here, okay? Amen. Let's thank God for Lady Lou as well. Okay. TJ, if you would get Pastor, Ch Pastor Trey's chair and bring it to, to the middle for me. Also, we have refreshments in Grand Central after uh, Reverend Faust comes and leads us, and then Pastor Lou gives us the benediction. Please make sure to enjoy refreshments as well. Also, we need to recognize Sister Ethel Scott, who is here at church. Miss Scott, can you wave? Oh, she's going to stand. Thank you. Praise God for Sister Ethel Scott being here at church today in observance of Pastor's anniversary. So happy to see Sister Scott. One of our senior members. Yeah, we need a basket. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Smith. Okay. Reverend Fowler. Amen. Amen. We're now going to, and before you come, we're going to bless it. Amen. So I'm going to ask that you would hold it up like we normally do. Before you come, that way we'll know that it's already been done. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Luke. Amen. That my heart has been touched, and uh, thank him for blessing Angwell. Amen. You can tell I got pulpit etiquette, because there's some things you just ain't got no business messing with. I ain't finna to touch that summer. I ain't going to mess nothing up. Sometimes you need to know when to shut up. Some preachers get up and mess it. No, I, I got my procedure up. Thank you. Amen. Hold your offering up, y'all. Come on, hold it up. Amen. God bless you. Now, y'all ain't going to see me go down there and give Pastor Trey nothing. Uh, not that it's y'all business, but he got his. Oh, trust me, he got his. Amen. So I ain't got to do no marching. But I'm going to instruct y'all to do it, okay? Amen. Eternal God, we come thanking you for the offering that we're about to receive for our tithes and our offerings and the love we will show to our pastor. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Uh, pastor, you may take the seat. I'm going to start instructing them to come around, and we're going to start with our right side on this side, right side on this side. Amen. Go this way and come around. Go and come around this way on the right side. Come around. Amen. Start on this side. Come all the way around this way. On the right side, let us all stand. Come around the wall. And go back to your seat. Hey, come on. Come on, starting from the rear. Come on. Come on around. Thank you. Amen. Come around. Just want to praise him. Come. Oh. 
the center aisle, in the center aisle where you stand, in the center aisle, stand. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and honor, they all belong to you. They all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, blessing me. Pick it up. Just want to pray.
we get ready to, we're going to ask that we um, please be obedient. Uh, we have not given the benediction, nor have we blessed the food. I see folk moving. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to ask Pastor, um, Pastor Trey, do you have anything else to say? Okay, we're going to let Pastor Luke come. Uh, so he can cry. Did y'all want to come around or y'all already? Okay. Amen. Don't want to overlook nobody. Amen. We're going to ask Pastor Lou if he will come and dismiss us as he come with the closing and the benediction. And we're going to ask him to bless the refreshments on the other side. Amen. family, thank um, our foundation in the Jacksons for all that you all mean to my life and my wife, and we thank y'all so much. Um, I want to thank Pastor and Pastor for making the journey with me this week to Montgomery uh, as we stood to fight for our returning citizens' right to vote. Amen. Um, you just don't have a preaching pastor. You've got a serving pastor. Uh, so we thank God for the model that uh, Michael Eugene Jackson has set for us and that Trey and I are trying to carry on. I would ask you to do me a favor. Um, you all watched the news this week. You all watched the news this week. Amen. Y'all saw the news last week. Y'all saw the press conference and all that's been going on. Pray for a family that has lost two sons. And pray for a mother that's still trying to figure it out. Pray for our city that the right thing is done. And pray for us in the clergy and justice community as we don't jump to conclusions, but we don't stay unnecessarily silent. We want justice to roll down like waters, righteousness like an ever flowing stream, but peace, peace, peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this occasion. Allow this day to be a part of the healing process so that this your Joshua can face his Jericho and come out better on the other side. Thank you for these people who thought it not robbery to tell you thank you for him. 
And thank you for this predecessor who thought it not robber to stay as a, as a voice of wisdom as we move forward in your destiny. Touch the gifts that he's received. Allow them to bless every need of his life and remind him that his labors have not been in vain. Touch the food and continued celebrations that we will share on this day. But then be with us as we all heal from our necessary procedures so that we can turn around and tell somebody God had to cut me so he can take me to one more level in him. Now unto him who's able. And that's enough to shout about right there. Be all honor, majesty, dominion, and power. Henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said amen. And praise God. We love you. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. May your week be amazing and remember that we live well, love well, and lead well at the web. Mm -hmm.